New sponsor by. You can now order your roti skins from Des Tasty Treats and Roti Skins at telephone one seven eight four five two eight two nine seven nine, or pick up Des Tasty Treats and Roti Skins at Randy's Supermarket. More products are coming soon from Des Tasty Treats and Roti Skins. In the news, the Royal Saint Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force (RSVGPF) has launched an investigation into the tragic shooting death of Marilyn John, a forty-eight-year-old vendor from Pole Yard, Arno's Vale. Preliminary investigations indicate that the incident occurred around 9 p.m. on October 29, 2024, as Ms. John was on her way home. Reports suggest that three masked assailants opened fire on Ms. John while she was seated in her vehicle. Other occupants were present at the time of the incident but were unharmed. The district medical officer, DMO, arrived on the scene and pronounced Ms. John deceased. Crime Scene Unit, CSU personnel were promptly dispatched to process the scene, and various exhibits were collected as part of the ongoing investigation. A post-mortem examination is expected to be conducted to determine the exact cause of death. The National Association of Early Childhood Educators of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Incorporated, Nice SVG, will be hosting its annual Independence Mock Parade on Thursday, October 31, beginning with a march from Heritage Square to Victoria Park, beginning at 9, 9 a.m. The preschoolers, educators, and parents will be accompanied by the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and a cultural presentation will follow at the Victoria Park. A special guest artiste along with the announcement of the Best Design Preschool Competition under the theme, Independence, will be highlights of the day. The mock parade's objective is to expose our children to the military parade and to bring all of our preschoolers together nationally in socialization while saluting these professionals of importance. The first mock parade was held in 2019, with a two-year hiatus due to COVID-19 and the La Soufriere volcano. This year's presentation is the third staging of the event. Police arrested and charged Debbie K. Bracken, a 21-year-old fisherman of Sandy Bay, with the offense of wounding. According to the investigation, the accused unlawfully and maliciously wounded, an 11-year-old miner of Paget Farm by stabbing him on his left foot with a knife. The offense was committed on September 22, 2024 at Paget Farm. Bracken was granted station bail in the sum of $1,500 ECC with one surety. He is expected to appear before the Bequia Magistrate Court on November 22, 2024. Police arrested and jointly charged Chemo Endeavor, a 26-year-old carpenter, Kaimi Endeavor, a 22-year-old carpenter and Kean Endeavor, a 21-year-old mason all of Kane Hall, with the offense of assault. According to investigations, the accused assaulted a 30-year-old operator of same address by hitting her on the head and squeezing her neck with their hands causing actual bodily harm. The offense was committed on August 28, 2024 at Richmond Hill Public Road. The co-accused appeared before the Kingstown Magistrate Court on October 29, 2024 where they pleaded not guilty to the to the charge. The conditions of their station bail continues and the trial date was set for November 27, 2024. Police arrested and charged Kesroy Ryan Bowen, a 24-year-old laborer of Lomans Hill, with multiple serious offenses including theft, abduction, attempted rape, and wounding. Investigations revealed that on October 20, 2024, in Arno's Vale, the accused allegedly carried away a female complainant without her consent from Arno's Vale to Lomans Hill. On October 21, 2024, in Arno's Vale, Bowen is also accused of stealing one multicolored purse valued at $60 ECC containing $3 ECC, totaling $63 ECC, the property of the female complainant. Further investigations indicate that on October 22, 2024, in Lomans Hill, the accused, with intent to commit the offense of rape, engaged in acts more than merely preparatory to the commission of the offense. Additionally, on the same date and location, Bowen unlawfully and maliciously wounded the female complainant by stabbing her on the right hand with a pair of scissors. The accused was apprehended and taken before the Serious Offenses Court on October 29, 2024 to answer to the charges. He was not expected to plea because of the indictable nature of the offenses. He was granted bail in the sum of $20,000 ECC with one surety. 
He was also ordered to report to the central police station every Monday, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. The matter was adjourned and transferred to the family court for October 30, 2024. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force remains committed to public safety and the rule of law. The recent arrest and charging of the accused reflect our ongoing efforts to maintain national security while ensuring due process is upheld. Police arrested and charged Soria Jackson, a 22-year-old resident of Queens Drive, with two counts of assault and damage to property. According to the investigations, the accused assaulted a 20-year-old cashier of Bel Air, by beating her about her body with her hands causing actual bodily harm. She was also charged with damaging the complainant's pink and white t-shirt, valued at $30 ECC. She was further charged with assaulting a 45-year-old resident of Bel Air by beating her about her body with her hands causing actual bodily harm. The offenses were committed on September 14, 2024, in Queens Drive. Jackson appeared before the Kingstown Magistrate Court on October 29, 2024 and pleaded not guilty to the charges. She was granted bail in the sum of $2,750 ECC and ordered not to have any contact with the complainant. She is to report to the Central Police Station every Wednesday between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The trial date is set for February 11, 2025. Police arrested and charged a female student of Queen's Drive with the offense of wounding and assault. Investigations revealed that the accused unlawfully and maliciously wounded a 20-year-old cashier of Bel Air by hitting her on her hand with a blunt object. The defendant was further charged with assaulting a 45-year-old resident of Bel Air by raising a cutlass at her with the intent to commit an offense. Both offenses were committed on September 14, 2024 in Queens Drive. The defendant appeared before the Kingstown Magistrate Court on October 29, 2024 and pleaded not guilty to the charges. She was granted bail in the sum of $2,750 ECC and ordered not to have any contact with the complainant. She is to report to the Central Police Station every Wednesday between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The trial date is set for February 11, 2025. Police arrested and charged Rashid Watson, a 30-year-old laborer of Green Hill, with the offense of possession of controlled drugs. Investigations revealed that the accused was found in possession of 596 grams of cannabis, with the intent to supply it to another. The offense occurred in Barrow Alley on October 28, 2024. Watson appeared before the Serious Offenses Court on October 29, 2024 and pleaded guilty to the charge. He was fined $250 ECC to be paid by November 13, 2024, in default he will spend three months in prison. On October 28, 2024, police arrested and charged Heron Ells, a 32-year-old construction worker of Arno's Vale, with the offense of assault. According to investigations, the accused unlawfully assaulted a 16-year-old student of Arno's Vale by striking her on her right shoulder with his right shoulder, causing actual bodily harm. The offense occurred in Arno's Vale on September 21, 2024. Ells appeared before the Kingstown Magistrate Court on October 29, 2024 and pleaded not guilty to the charge. He was granted bail in the sum of $2,000 ECC with one surety and ordered not to have any contact with the complainant. The matter was adjourned to February 5, 2025 for trial. Unrise Airways is launching a new flight route to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Tourism Authority, SVGTA, announced that the new service will link St. Vincent and the Grenadines with Antigua, St. Kitts, Dominica, and St. Lucia. SVGTA's chief executive officer, Annette Mark, emphasized the importance of this development for regional tourism saying, We are thrilled to welcome Sunrise Airways to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, opening new doors for Caribbean travelers to experience our beautiful islands. This enhanced connectivity reflects our commitment to making St. Vincent and the Grenadines more accessible and inviting to travelers across the region. We are confident this partnership will foster a deeper sense of community among our neighboring islands and boost regional tourism. Sunrise Airways commenced operations at Argyle International Airport on October 28. The new Sunrise Airways route is expected to be an asset for enhancing business and leisure travel within the Caribbean 
allowing more visitors to experience the destination's warm hospitality and distinctive attractions. In a landmark moment for the healthcare sector, Taiwan's foreign minister, His Excellency Lin Chialung, joined members of parliament, government officials, and community leaders at the groundbreaking ceremony for the new state-of-the-art acute care hospital at Arnos Vale. The groundbreaking was held on the eve of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' Independence Day, marking a significant milestone in the long-standing friendship and cooperation between Taiwan and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, SVG. Addressing the gathering, H.E. Lin Chialung expressed his delight at visiting St. Vincent and the Grenadines, describing it as a beautiful country, rich in natural resources and cultural diversity. Taiwan and St. Vincent and the Grenadines established diplomatic ties in 1981 and over the past 43 years, our nations have forged a strong, mutually beneficial partnership," he stated. His Excellency highlighted Taiwan's commitment to supporting SVG in various sectors, including infrastructure, public health, agriculture, ICT, education, and the empowerment of women and youth. He noted that the acute care hospital is a key achievement in this partnership and a milestone that showcases Taiwan's dedication to SVG's development. The project is overseen by the Taiwanese company OECC, which was also involved in the construction of the Argyle International Airport Terminal Building. The Taiwanese foreign minister also underscored the impact of this healthcare investment, noting that the hospital will not only modernize medical care in St. Vincent but also create numerous job opportunities for the local population. He emphasized the importance of providing accessible, affordable, and high-quality healthcare infrastructure as a central pillar of cooperation between Taiwan and SVG. Like Taiwan, St. Vincent is a resilient and vibrant democracy. Our friendship stands strong, and our commitment to deepening ties will continue to benefit both our nations as we move into the future," he remarked. The event concluded with the foreign minister extending his best wishes for the continued prosperity and friendship of both Taiwan and SVG. Today, we lay the foundation not only for a new hospital but for a future of strengthened collaboration and growth for our two great nations," he said. We move to the regional news. The government of St. Lucia welcomed Honorable Dr. Lin Chialung, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of China, Taiwan, and head of President Lai ching special envoy to Latin America and the Caribbean, along with his delegation. This visit aimed to strengthen our bilateral ties and explore the progress of key projects that resonate with the government's people-first development agenda. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre and the Cabinet of Ministers engaged in productive discussions with Honorable Dr. Lin, emphasizing both parties' commitment to enhancing our infrastructure and fostering economic prosperity. On the margins of the meeting, Honorable Dr. Lin and his delegation also joined Prime Minister Pierre. Minister for Health Honorable Moses J. N. Baptiste and other cabinet members to launch the Innovative Ice Cream System app. This app, developed through valuable technical cooperation and knowledge sharing with Taiwan's Cathay General Hospital, is set to enhance the Ministry of Health's data collection capabilities, making health screenings more efficient and accessible. The visit of Honorable Dr. Lin Chialung and his delegation reflects St. Lucia's strong partnership with Taiwan and the shared commitment to initiatives that promise real benefits for the people of St. Lucia. In a strategic move towards achieving accreditation readiness and elevating healthcare quality standards, St. Jude Hospital recently concluded a rigorous five-day training workshop. Focused on risk management, quality improvement, and patient-centered care, this initiative was held in partnership with Accreditation Canada, a renowned authority in healthcare quality improvement and accreditation services. The immersive training workshop, hosted at Coconut Bay Resort, served as a collaborative platform for healthcare professionals dedicated to fortifying St. Lucia's healthcare system. By bringing together industry experts and practitioners, the event aimed to enhance the hospital service delivery while advancing sustainable improvements across the healthcare landscape. As St. Jude Hospital forges ahead in its mission to evolve and excel in healthcare provision, this significant workshop represents a pivotal milestone in the journey towards achieving enhanced healthcare delivery standards and fostering system wide advancements. I note in this Diwali season, the festivities and especially the Diwali Nagar are being unnecessarily blemished once more. It is obvious that over the years, attacks have come from the opposition against predominantly PNM, People's National Movement, members. This year is unfortunately no different, with an organization named the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, 
Gopio, writing the NCIC, National Council of Indian Culture, to object to Trinidad and Tobago's acting Prime Minister, Stuart Young, speaking at the Diwali Nagar. My first question was, who is Gopio, and what is their role in Trinidad and Tobago? I examined their constitution, which states that Gopio is a secular, non-political non-part one san, non-sectarian, not-for-profit global organization engaged in promoting the well-being of people of Indian origin. I also noted that this organization is formed with chapters across the globe, promoting the advancement and well-being of persons of Indian origin and even seeking to establish trade and financial networks, which is laudable. Consideration is being given to increasing the fines for motorists who indiscriminately park in spaces reserved for people with disabilities. That's according to Disabilities Advocate and Member of Parliament for St. James North, Edmund Hinkson. Mr. Hinkson says the proposal has been sent to Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Transport, Santia Bradshaw. Mr. Hinkson was speaking during debate on a resolution to approve the national policy for improving the lives of persons with disabilities. He says the plan is to meet with insurance companies again, to discuss challenges affecting members of the community in this regard. National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines said the viral clip of women voting to reject him as Laventille West MP was part of a hat design and that elections bring out the best and worst behavior in some people. He told Express senior political reporter Anna Ramdas, at this time in the life of the PNM, election time, nomination time, we get to see the best and the worst of the behavior of some persons, said Hines in a telephone interview with the Express. He was responding to questions about a viral clip in which it is purported that members of the Laventil West Women's League voted to reject him as the constituency representative. The minister stated that at election time, there is a democratic process, and it tends to be very competitive. The University of the West Indies, the UWI, Global Campus will confer an honorary Doctor of Laws, LLD, degree on outstanding Grenadian sprinter Mr. Karani James, in recognition of his excellence in athletics, during its upcoming virtual graduation ceremony, scheduled for Saturday, November 9, 2024, at 6 p.m. EC. The ceremony will be streamed live via www.uwitv.org and on UWIT's channels on Flow EVO and Facebook Live. This year's celebration is especially meaningful, as it embraces the theme celebrating Caribbean legacy, a kaleidoscope of resilience, highlighting UWI's enduring legacy across the region. The energy of South Trinidad leads the way into T&T's Carnival 2025 season, as San Fernando City Month takes center stage in November. A number of events are being planned under the patronage of the city's mayor, Councillor Robert L. Paris. Organizers are preparing for what will be a fantastic month ahead. One major event on the list of community-building initiatives is a brunch mixer dubbed Stush. This event offers an opportunity for everyone to meet and greet each other in an informal setting, network and possibly collaborate, says Wendy H. Lewis. Her company, Calabash Productions is at the helm of event production throughout San Fernando City Month. Stush follows the mayor's boat ride, Soiree on D. Seas, which takes place on Saturday, November 2. The November 10 all-inclusive brunch will deliver sumptuous cuisine of great variety, as well as delightful cocktails and premium drinks. Added to that, live entertainment will be provided by a few Southern favorites. We're honored to have three-time Chutney Soka Monarch winner, G.I., along with veteran Soka artiste, KMC, the consummate groovy Soka performer, Farmer Nappy, along with the Point Fortin Vibes Nation Rhythm Section and the South United Tassa Drummers, said Lewis. She says these entertainers were specifically chosen as homegrown entertainers of the Southland, allowing them each the chance to be seen, heard, and appreciated by their San Fernando supporters. Lewis says proceeds from events hosted during San Fernando City Month will benefit community projects and causes within the city. Stush is the first of many annual events to come. We are already planning for the Stush Carnival All-Inclusive in 2025, she said, adding, we feel it is important for businessmen and women of all levels and variations to foster community collaboration learn from each other to the benefit of our city. This event promises to engage our community's leaders and those who are on their way up the ladder, encouraging synergistic dialogue and hopefully leveraging on knowledge and direction. With over three decades of experience in event planning, 
Wendy Lewis is dedicated to making this event and all others under her stewardship for San Fernando City Month a tremendous success. I want to reiterate that Stush is a brunch event, which begins at 10 a.m. and ends at 2 p.m. We look forward to having our community's influencers, leaders, and supporters come out early and enjoy the assortment of food, drinks and further build community, as one, she said. The event is being hosted at the base of the San Fernando Hill and DJs include the hitman Howie T along with Sensational Sammy. It's an all-white affair, and we can't wait to welcome our beautiful people of San Fernando and environs to celebrate our city and make essential connections with each other, for further growth and betterment in our community. International news is next. A small number of North Korean troops are already inside Ukraine, according to two Western intelligence officials, and officials expect that number to grow as the North Koreans complete training in eastern Russia and move toward the front lines of the war. The North Korean troops' presence inside Ukraine goes a step beyond what NATO and the Pentagon confirmed on Monday, which is that roughly 10,000 North Korean troops are training in eastern Russia with some en route to Russia's Kursk region. Ukrainian troops have held territory inside Kursk since August. It seems that a good many of them are already in action, one of the officials said on Tuesday, referring to the North Koreans. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said last week that Ukrainian intelligence assessed that the troops would start to enter combat zones on Sunday. A U.S. official said the U.S. cannot yet corroborate reports that North Korean troops are already inside Ukraine. Canada alleged on October 29 that Amit Shah, India's interior minister and the chief aide to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, was behind plots to target Sikh separatists on Canadian soil. The allegation follows Canada's expulsion this month of six Indian diplomats it has linked to the murder of a Sikh separatist leader on Canadian soil. India has previously denied Canadian allegations and has responded by expelling six Canadian diplomats. Police are searching for the estranged husband of a woman who was found stabbed to death and wrapped in a blanket inside a Philadelphia garage last weekend. The body of 51-year-old Ivelisse Lugo was found Sunday after she had previously been reported missing, according to police. Her estranged husband, Miguel Aguilar, 34, is believed to be a person of interest. No arrests have been made in the murder and a weapon has not been recovered, police said. UN Security Council meets over accusations of North Korean troops in Russia. The UN Security Council meets over accusations that North Korean troops are in Russia. North Korea's deployment to Russia to aid its war against Ukraine has potential to lengthen the already two-and-a-half-year-old conflict and draw in additional actors, US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said. Former President Donald Trump on Tuesday evening returned to a Hispanic-majority town in eastern Pennsylvania after a comedian at Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden over the weekend sparked controversy by making racist jokes about Latinos, including calling Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Trump did not address the comedian's controversial remarks, but did seize on comments President Joe Biden made on Tuesday when, criticizing the remarks about Puerto Rico, Biden used wording that seemed to refer to Trump supporters as garbage. Toward the end of the rally, Trump invited Senator Marco Rubio to the stage, who broke the news of Biden's comments to Trump and the crowd. Trump recalled Hillary Clinton's controversial, basket of deplorables, line in 2016. She said, deplorable. That didn't work out, Trump said. Garbage, I think is worse. Trump's rally took place in Allentown, Pennsylvania a city of more than 125,000 people where the Hispanic population makes up 55% of the total, according to the U.S. Census data, with much of that number being Puerto Ricans. This end of Bay News Network News. News sponsored by You can now order your roti skins from Des Tasty Treats and Roti Skins at telephone 1784-528-2979 or pick up Des Tasty Treats and Roti Skins at Randy's Supermarket. More products are coming soon from Des Tasty Treats and Roti Skins. Sports is next. Audio Jungle. Sports was sponsored by. 
Looking for a place to relax with natural cool breeze and friendly surroundings? Then check the Bay Hill Tree Bar, located at Bay Hill Cane Garden. We have everything a bar will have. We also sell shell 20 pound de cooking gas at the Bay Hill Tree Bar. In the sports, Caesars Real Estate, Heron Beer, and our friend Dem Gregg's 2020 Softball Cricket Tournament 2024. Fixtures for games to be played over the weekend of November 3rd. 9.30 a.m. Oia Strikers vs. Caesars Real Estate Smashers. 12.30 p.m. RSVG Police vs. Young Stars. 3 p.m. Oia Strikers vs. Fairban United. Results in the Vitamalt Shown Hill Netball Tournament for October 29, 2024. Game 1. Shown Hill 2. 36. Sardo Strikers 9. Game 2. Jaguars 26. Mystic 22. Results from inter-primary school netball games played on Tuesday, October 29. Clare Valley Gov, 9. Leu Gov, 6. Fitzhughes Gov, 22. Rose Hall Gov, 1. Chateaubelair Methodist won by default over Du Bois Gov. Kingstown Gov, 3. Lomans Leeward Anglican, 2. Griegs Gov, 9. Lomans Windward Anglican, 2. Kane End Gov, 2. Richland Park Gov, 26. Lomans Windward Gov, 5. Stubbs Gov, 1. Griegs Gov, 1 by default over New Grounds Primary. Fancy Gov, 9. Georgetown Gov, 4. Langley Par Gov, 5. Park Hill Gov, 1. Sandy Bay Gov, 16. Tarama Gov, 2. SVG Masters 2020 Cricket Results October 27. At Stubbs, Sunday October 27. Mustique Company Masters defeated Shown Hill Masters by 8 wickets. Shown Hill Masters won 17 for 8 off 20 overs. Ashley Cordes 30 not Iot. Sylvester Van Loo 18. Edgerton Mofford 18. Drummo Tony 3 for 27. Caswell Dorset 2 for 19. Mustique Company Masters won 18 for 2 off 9.1 overs. Nicholas Baptiste 44. Chadwick Walton 24. Siren Palmore 20 not out. At Park Hill. Sunday, October 27. North East Masters won from North Windward Masters by 163 runs. North East Masters 268 for 4 off 20 overs. Renrick Williams 112 not out. Dayton Butler 52 not out. Vasco Sampson 42. Ramel Olivier 23. Wendell Jordan 2 for 45. Dalton Michael 2 for 37. North Windward Masters 105 all out off 16.5 overs. Derry Roberts 22. Emron Lorraine 3 for 13. Hollis John 3 for 22. The quarter finals are now set for Friday, November 1st. National Lottery's Unique Touch Soccer SVGCC Invitational Football. Quarter finals fixtures. Friday, November 1, 2024. 12 p.m. Sport Sciences Soon Grads vs. DTV. 1.15 p.m. Jebel Youths vs. Hope International Youths. 2.30 p.m. Galaxy Gladiators vs. System 3 Youths. 3.45 p.m. Sport Sciences Freshers vs. DSGS Year 1. This end of our sports news, sports was sponsored by. Looking for a place to relax with natural cool breeze and friendly surroundings? Then check the Bay Hill Tree Bar, located at Bay Hill Cane Garden. We have everything a bar will have. We also sell shell 20 pounds of cooking gas at the Bay Hill Tree Bar.